Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Well, 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 looks like we are finally going to get the information that so many Dragon Age fans have been looking forward to. Tomorrow, Dragon Age Veilguard is going to get a new trailer along with a release date. And Bioware has released a roadmap detailing when a lot of crucial information is going to become available. Can't wait for it. I'm actually going to live stream my reaction to the trailer tomorrow morning. So we'll be able to experience it all together along with combing through the trailer and seeing what little tidbits we can get out of it. Hopefully all of you will be able to join me. The trailer, I believe it's going to release at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'll be on a little bit before then. We'll play a little bit of Dragon Age 2, which we've been live streaming on the channel until it's time to go ahead and walk through the trailer. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into Bioware's announcement on Twitter because they actually also released a bunch of screenshots for the game for both your Rook main character and the party members as well. So first and foremost, we've got the roadmap. On August 15th, tomorrow at 11 a.m., we're gonna get a release date trailer and an announcement. Very, very exciting. Then on August 19th, or the week of August 19th, we'll be able to get a look at the combat and PC Spotlight, which should be very interesting. Maybe they're doing some things for uh, players who plan to do this on the PC that'll get us really excited. I wasn't uh, expecting that, but we'll find out. Then the week after is Companion week I'm really really excited about that historically Dragon Age has very very uh, solid companions the companions are really what makes the game and hopefully the veil guard will be no different and then on August 30th there's going to be a developer discord q and a I'm definitely going to be in there and I'll give you all a summary of what happens in that q and a on this channel so if you're interested in more Dragon Age news definitely be sure to subscribe and hit that like button and then on September 3rd, IGN is going to start their month-long exclusive coverage, which most likely means that Dragon Age is not going to come out until October at the earliest. I'm actually very happy about that. Again, we've been playing through the Dragon Age trilogy and I still have to get through all of Inquisition. So my hope is that we can use the month of um, August to get through Dragon Age 2. And then September, we can get through Inquisition, and then we'll be ready in October for Dragon Age Veilguard. So an early October release date is definitely what I'm pulling for. But regardless, this roadmap is very exciting. I think by the end of uh, August, everybody's going to have a real clear idea about whether or not this is a game that they would be interested in purchasing. Now, again, on top of releasing that roadmap, they've added a bunch of screenshots for the game. So this is an example of a male rook that has been created. To be honest with you, there's a male and female version we'll look at. Neither one of them are crazy impressive to me. They've been really, really touting their character creator um system and saying that it's going to be absolutely amazing i don't think this showcases that but of course we could be surprised once it's actually out what i will say though is the hair looks significantly better than it did in inquisition hair looked really really awful in inquisition it always looked like little stubbles that had been put on it didn't look like real hair at all and at least on the top of his head, it looks like real hair, but I don't know. The faces aren't really grabbing me. It might be just the way um, the game is designed, but it's not pulling me. And it might, I might feel differently once I see it in a full trailer or of course, when I play the game. Now, again, they did have a, um, did provide a screenshot with a female version of the Rook. And so this is actually a female elf. I'll be playing the game as a male elf, and I'm really, really hoping they give us the opportunity to side with Solus. That's what I want to do. I played as a city elf in Origins. Unfortunately, I had to be human for Dragon Age 2, but I had a mod, and I've been able to give my character some Dalish uh, elf tattoos in honor of my first playthrough. And then in Inquisition, we're going to be going right back to elf and romancing Solus, leading up to this playthrough where my hope is we can all the way side with Solus, all the way side with elves, don't give a damn about how humanity is impacted by tearing down the veil. That's the kind of playthrough that I'm hoping that we'll be able to do. We'll see if the Bioware team delivers. Now, they also provided some screenshots of the party members. So the first one is Davrin. 
who is a gray warden. I've seen a lot of people saying that they feel like the party members in Veil Guard are unattractive and that this is kind of an issue with modern games in general. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that I feel like the party members are unattractive, but I will say it's a little unfortunate that in my opinion, Davrin is the best looking one out the bunch. I feel like Davrin has the most striking look and he it, it's a look that makes him automatically really, really interesting. Whereas I don't feel that way about any of the females that I could potentially romance in the game. So it would have been nice if some of the females were a little bit more attractive, but who knows? Maybe when I get to know them, know their backgrounds and their stories, they'll be more attractive to me as romance options. We'll see. But regardless, I think Davrin looks amazing. I love the Grey Wardens. I think they're one of the strongest parts of the Dragon Age series overall. So no question, he's going to be a permanent mainstay in my party when I am playing Veilguard. Now, they also provided a um, uh, screenshot of Miss Gallus, the detective. I'm not a fan of the book on the head look. <laughs> Maybe it'll grow on me when I'm actually playing the game, but I gotta be honest with you as of right now. It's, uh, but it is it is unique, I'll give it that. It's not like uh, they're trying to take from somebody else. And this look makes me a little bit less interested in her overall. But hopefully when I talk to her more, I actually do love mysteries. I love detectives. I love, you know, people who are capable of critical thinking and doing detective work. So maybe when I get more insight into who she is and how she approaches her role, it'll make her more interesting and more of a um, romance option for me. Even though I definitely plan to romance the veil jumper in my first uh, go round. So she's going to be the second romance option or the romance option for my second plate, the most likely. And then the party member outside of Davrin, who I'm probably the most interested in learning about, is Tash, um, pictured here. Uh, while, again, I'm not all that impressed with the face models in this game, I think the overall look for her with the gold on the horns and the jewelry and the scales and all that, I think all that looks amazing, really, really enticing, really makes you want to learn more about her. And I'm very curious about... Is she Tal Vashoff or is she actually Kunari? I don't know that I even have a, a preference. I'm good either way, but I just love the Kunari overall. I feel like they got a really, really nice glow up in Dragon Age 2. And in Inquisition, Bioware just stacked lore on top of that and made them a really, really fascinating culture. And so I can't wait to learn more about them in Veilguard. Tash, unfortunately, is not going to have much of a role in the party that I run on the live stream. But I'm almost thinking I might do both a live stream of Veilguard and a um, Let's Play of the game. Because I want my, my live stream is definitely going to be Elf and it's definitely going to be all about the Elven people. But I want, and that's going to be also where I'm a more sarcastic uh, individual. But I also want to have a run where I play as a Kunari. Um, who doesn't care about the elves at all and who is very stoic and aggressive. And I'm wondering if that might be a good time to have Tash uh, in the party, how how they end up pairing. Uh, I wonder if it's going to be similar to being a gift Yankee and playing with Lazelle in Baldur's Gate 3, where you're able to share a lot of your culture, have a lot of interesting conversations that another character would not be able to have. I'm hoping for that most definitely. And so I'm thinking that might be the route I go. But regardless, really, really excited about this announcement. Really excited to find out what they're going to do for Veilguard. It's been a long, long time since the last Dragon Age. So hopefully that is time well spent and we're in for yet another great game in the series. But let me know you all's thoughts down in the comments. Are you interested in this release? How do you feel about the screenshots that were released for potential rook characters you could play as? Are you interested in the trailer? Is there a specific release date that you're looking forward to? Looking forward to hearing your feedback. And as always, I hope you enjoy this video. Take care.